What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about fishing brush piles. Now we're going to be using like the Ozarks here as our sample. So if you've ever been here, you fish here, you know that is a big deal to fish brush here and that there are also like 10 million brush piles in this lake. So the first thing I'll talk about is kind of finding the piles or where to look and then I'll talk about the baits. Then we'll go actually fish some piles and while I'm fishing them, I'll kind of just show you how I go about it or what I like to do. There's going to be different methods. Talk to different people. Everyone's kind of got their own style, I would say, for fishing brush. It's kind of like a, it's a fun thing almost to fish with somebody else while you're doing it because you kind of see like how you may differ from them and how small things can generate uh, more bites in a day. So my goal today is to kind of help simplify it a little bit maybe for you or get you familiar with it if it's something you're not good at or something that you don't spend a lot of time doing. So as far as the location of your brush pile, there are many, many different areas uh, that piles are good at and there's some spots that they just seem to not produce. Um, but overall, you're gonna have a lot of brush around docks. People are gonna put them out, homeowners are gonna put them out, fishermen are gonna put them out. There's just, people wanna have brush alongside their dock if they like to fish. It's easy for them, gives the fish habitat, whatever. So if you go down like any road dock, let's just take this for example, this little secondary point over here, secondary over here, same one over there. You pick any of these secondary points with docks on it and I guarantee you that there is brush. I actually know there's brush over here, but I guarantee you go to any of these other two points and on at least one of those docks, there's gonna be brush either out on the front of it. What I'm calling the front of the dock is like the deep side where there's gonna be brush along the sides. Some people put them in the slips underneath their boat lifts. Um, it's popular for like crappie fishermen to put them like way up under there where you have to stand like in front of the boat slip and jig for them. So sometimes you can skip a jig or or get a bait or something uh, through the side to get to those. Every once in a while you can like go parallel to the boat and skip something in there but a lot of times the lifts and stuff have bars and it's really hard to get up in there. So those are like super sneaky piles if you can ever get to them. But a ton of them are going to have the brush that are out deep, easy to access from a boat. And then in the same breath, you're also going to have piles that people put shallow, like under the walkways and the shallow side of the dock, especially when you get to like fall or springtime, people want brush there, fishing tournaments and stuff. There's, there's plenty of piles, you just got to look for them sometimes and you can get sneaky with those and you can push them, you know, in hard to reach areas where you got to have a good cast to get to them. But nonetheless, there is going to be brush around docks everywhere here and there's I don't even know how many docks in this lake. So that's kind of like part one of brush is you can just run around and fish the docks and you're gonna find brush. And I'm doing a lot of side scanning looking for it. Um, but if you don't have that or you don't have forward facing sonar when you're actually fishing, just just use your eyes. Look for fishing boats, look for rod holders, look for a fish cleaning table. Anything that signifies that, hey, this person likes to fish, there's a good chance there's brush around that dock somewhere. Now, the next set of piles is kind of like, I'll just call it like points or bare bank piles. So people, that's where people are strictly setting them out. It could be on points, it can be on flats that are adjacent to deep water. Uh, you can put it near like a bottom change, creek channel banks, just you're basically just putting a pile out to try and get the fish to congregate more in one spot instead of having to fish a larger area. That's the mindset behind it for a lot of the tournament fishermen. So that's kind of like the other part of brush pile fishing, I would say. You got like your populated areas around your docks and stuff, and then you've got just like bare banks that are gonna have brush on it. Now, as far as the type of brush, I'm gonna keep it really simple. We're just gonna call it like a hardwood tree, or we're gonna call it a cedar pile. Cedar seems to attract crappie a lot more than bass. Hardwood piles seem to attract bass a lot better, hold bass a lot better. They also have crappie around them too, but they seem to really hold the bass because I think the bass like to have the room and the branches and stuff to, to move around and be in there. Whereas a cedar pile, it's so thick, there's not as much room. The fish are almost like suspended over top of that versus like being in the pile. So I think that's the reason behind that. That's at least kind of how I feel. As far as the baits go, uh, here is kind of a little staple for right now. This is late summer. We could even call this almost early fall at this point. But uh, this is pretty much what I'm throwing through the summertime at brush. So I'm going to have a curly tail worm, 10 inch, take your pick, Texas rig. Uh, I'm going to have a shaky head and I'm going to have a jig. Now there's two things I want to talk about here 
with the shaky head and the jig. First thing is, I'm out of the shaky heads that I normally throw and brush. So I'm using this football style, if you can see very well. Let's just say the football style is not really what you want to use for fishing brush. It's hung up way more than like a ball style or like a, even a hybrid style football where it's kind of a football jig, but it's it's got more like a tapered leading edge, I guess you would call it. You're going to go through brush a lot better with that. So that's one thing. And the same thing's going to go for the jig. This is a uh, Omega jig actually because it's color I needed and I didn't have any of my own so if you look at the head of that it comes through brush pretty well and then the jigs that I make same thing you can see it's got that rounded so if you look at it from like this way have it it's wider at the bottom and it tapers up towards the uh, eyelet there of the hook that's what you want you want something that's going to crawl through that brush easily and it's not going to get you hung up so that's what i'm going for as far as your jig trailer uh, in the summer month i like stuff flapping i like commotion movement this is a pack of chunk you can use a rage crawl you can use trigger crawls um Bojangles makes some stuff, Zoom makes some stuff. Pick your favorite soft plastic company and use what you have confidence in. You can use the beaver style baits in the summer months too if you want, but I seem to have more confidence in the, the kicking legs just because the water's hot, things are moving. As far as my rod choice goes, um, I got a lot of seven foot heavy stuff is what I throw, Dobbins, but um, like this is a seven foot three heavy. Honestly, uh, longer is better for brush get more power you're usually kind of fishing a little bit deeper water you get a little bit better hook sets with the longer rod so like i would say seven three is probably my preferred length or like what i would choose but i don't have everything of that rod so seven three seven four or even seven six if you want especially if you're fishing like main lake piles or something that'll get the job done there usually throw in 20 pound fluorocarbon or 17 pound one of the two for that uh, you can also mix in just a texas rig whatever like i got a texas rig curly tail worm on but you can throw um literally any soft plastic texas rig that you want in a brush ball and you're probably going to catch fish with that i got a, a brush hog on you could throw but i generally slip with that you can even carolina rig a little bit too if you want so i'm gonna go fish some piles but before i do that one thing i would do want to mention is kind of like looking at your conditions looking at where you think the fish are going to be in the brush pile because they're not always in it sometimes they're around it sometimes they're in it so my general rule of thumb how i generally look at it is sunny like today bluebird sky boy there's not even a cloud up there today i've been catching all my fish today so far in the pile i haven't really hit anything outside of it they've all been in it but if you get like a cloudier day or it's like morning evening whatever sometimes they'll straggle out of there and they'll be actually like around it you go through the pile you can drag that thing through the pile like five times nothing cast on like the left the right side of it change your angle up a little bit just drag it around the edge of it bonk got one so keep that in mind that you're not always just trying to hit the heart of the pile a lot of times you are but keep your options open sometimes they'll surprise you that they're not all the way in that thing so let's go fish and brush i've been fishing secondary points so far today doing doing okay uh, around docks but we're actually gonna go out to the main lake first to see if we can fish a couple piles and see if i can find one for you kind of show you how that goes setting up on it and uh cast it to it hopefully we can catch some out of there if not we will punt and come back to some secondary points around docks and stuff and i know we can catch some out of there so i'll see what we get all right now as far as looking for brush you're looking out both ways so here's some piles out here all these are little brush piles we just drove over one right here on down imaging so this pile particular one is going to be just right out here kind of on this dock corner uh looks like there's actually all in front of this dock if you look on our down imaging there you can see it on side imaging you can see oh uh, some little spots here look a little suspicious on your side imaging your brush is gonna look like a little fuzzball is almost the best way I can describe it. You're gonna lose like a little bit of the definition. The ones I showed um, further down, those look like harder pieces, like they had probably been there for quite some time. But if you get something that's like a smaller stick, that's like uh, got smaller branches, it just looks fuzzy is the best way I can describe it. So 
this is how I'm primarily like looking for spots with new brush if I don't have it marked. But sometimes, to be honest with you, a lot of times I pull up to a spot, maybe I've got it figured out like, hey, I want to fish halfway back or three quarters of the way back in a cove. I just pull up to it and start fishing docks and start shining uh, forward facing sonar around a little bit. That seems to work well for me because I'm fishing at the same time and I am kind of discovering things where sometimes it gets a little boring just sitting behind the wheel just marking 100 brush balls. But if you want to make a good milk run, those side scans, it's hard to beat. Um, just you can cover so much water doing that and mark all your piles and stuff. But like I said, if you don't have the electronics, don't freak out. Just go fishing, fish your docks, fish the edges, fish the fronts, and just feel. And then, you know, take a mental note or mark on whatever mapping system you have or whatever. However you do it, you know, mark where that dock is, where that brush is, so you can return to it in the future. See our brush pile out here. Here's what it looks like on forward-facing sonar. It's about 60 feet out. I need to pan a little bit to the left or to the right. Get a little, there it is. Get a little better picture on it. But that's all we're looking for all we need so we're going to cast out there to it preferably cast a little past it and we're going to let our bait sink sink all the way down to the bottom you want it to fall on slack line but you want to watch your line uh, if you have your line tight it's going to pendulum back towards you a lot of times you're going to end up on the close side of the brush ball to you and you're never going to drag through it so Make sure you're always letting that thing fall straight down. Once it hits the bottom, then you can slowly pick it up, start moving it towards you or drag it, whatever your preference is, until you start to feel some branches, start to feel the pile. When you feel that, I let it sit for a second. When I first get to it, I just kind of let it sit there. And then I'll work my way through the pile. And every time I kind of bump into something, move a little bit I just let my bait sit for a couple seconds and then I move it again just kind of let it work its way through the pile out here the waves I mean you know I'm not moving my rod but I'm I'm moving my bait basically just the wave action is so it's kind of giving it a little bit of a shake and we'll see if anybody's home in this pile. Sometimes you can make multiple casts to one pile before you get a bite. Sometimes you'll get a bite right away. If you don't get bites, I usually will pick up my next bait and kind of rotate through. No takers on that. So I'll pick up the shaky head and we'll give that a launch. This pile's about 12 feet deep or so, which so far I've had most of my luck in about 15 feet plus so we'll see like i talked about in my other video finding your waypoints and stuff back um you notice i'm facing into the wind i'm facing into the boat waves whatever's pushing me so i can just bump my trolling motor forward a little bit i'm not constantly trying to back up and position the boat like that so here we're in the pile right there i got my shaky head on which gets stuck a lot in this so i'm gonna let it down a little Let's see if we can get out of it Oh, we're in it. So, this happens. It's a good example. This is real, real world. This isn't smoke and mirrors. You get snagged. So, take your, your line, got it like this with like a little bit of tension on it, and take what you have, kind of pull it out like this, and I call it the, the bow and arrow, where you're gonna snap that slack. You might have to do it a few times you might have to move it might not work but that's your best defense look at that got it here's some brush so we cast up here make sure we let her sink all the way i'm going to turn the boat so we don't get too close and encroach it So we are touching the pile. There's a fish, a little one, I think, a little. And it feels super big. So we were just in the pile there, just getting to it really a neat bit. 
short, I would imagine. He could be a small keeper. Yeah, he's just a short 14 and a half or so, but um, that was our first stop at a secondary point. Brush pile. So, catch one fish out of it, and go back for more. Like I said, so far today, the theme though has been uh, catching like one, maybe two out of a pile and then you gotta move. If there's other days you can catch five out of a pile on a real good day or a real good pile. It seems like it's almost like the time of the year. So far this time of the year is just, it's been one here, one there. It seems the more piles you fish, the better off you are versus finding a real hot pile. But we'll drag it along the edge of this again and see See if we get anything. This one's a bonus because it's also in the shade, shady side of the dock. Doesn't have to be because they're in about 15 to 18 feet of water, but I think that can help. There's another one. He might be a little healthier. At least feels like it. Yeah, sure. Okay. We can get him in the boat. There he is. It's two out of the same pile now. He bit my worm in half, so we're gonna have to put a new worm on. He's just over two pounds. All right, I'm gonna cast back down the edge again here first. Then we'll worry about looking for another pile. Let's see if we can get three out of here. That'd be my record for today out of one spot. All right, so hit the ground. Slowly picking it up. So far, it's pretty much made it there and they've got it already. I haven't really even got to work through it. All right, so now we're touching it. We're in it there. Hitting some branches. Let it fall. Let my tail do the work. There's a bite. There he is. Took him a minute. <laughs> they really got to think about it before they eat it. All right, that's three out of the same pile. So that's my record. <laughs> he's a keeper. He's right on the line. Well, let's see if we can get four. one that's out of a different pile right next door he's on the crossbar though hopefully I didn't lose him I don't feel him I don't feel him shaking yep I lost him now while I'm here, back up in there. Maybe if I'm a little closer, I'll have a better chance of getting them around that crossbar. There he is. Uh, come out of there, mister. You're a little fella. Okay. That was uh, four? Four out of the same spot? This is a real little guy. Oh, something is caught up. He's caught on something. Caught on that dock brace is what he was. And something that's messed up with my rod. That'd be another little keeper. And you've got, oh my, I've got a crappie line on you. I rescued you, bud. See you later, bud. That's like number five out of that pile. So another thing I want to add is fishing brush is not just like a summertime thing. It's basically year round. These fish are 
utilizing it in some way, shape, or form. So like in the winter, you can throw, you know, smaller shaky heads with like little swamp bugs and stuff, or like your finesse style plastics. You can throw finesse jigs in there, throw the A-rig over it. You can throw swim baits over it. You can throw swim baits year round, but uh, jerk baits too is another big thing in the winter, throwing over these brush piles and stuff. So it's basically just like, as the season changes, as the fish move, you're basically just taking brush that's in different depths and then putting a different bait in or around it is the gist of it. It takes a little practice. It's not gonna come overnight. Um, getting good at it, feeling at it, especially in the deeper brush and getting accustomed to what you're feeling. You're probably gonna set the hook on the brush pile about 10 dozen times, <laughs> but uh, you'll get used to it. You know, I know it take me a long time to get decent at it and i'm not even going to say that i'm like a super good brush fisherman there are some some people especially some one of the older guys that they can fish brush and it's just something they've been doing for so long that they've just like got the skill down they've got it refined so hopefully that helps you a little bit and i uh, can help you put some more fish in the boat you can see out of one pile i think i caught five or six fish i think i caught at least three keepers in one pile so Sometimes if you're fishing a tournament and you're looking for some fish, that's a good way to just get your limit going. Um, you can definitely catch big fish out of brush too. I know I didn't catch anything real big right there, pretty much just all 15 and a half, 16 inch fish or so. But uh, you know, there's definitely big fish in them and you sometimes gotta find where they're hanging out or which pile they're at, which the final thing I'll say is don't just get caught up on like, I'm just gonna fish brush and fish brush everywhere. Try and put a system to it a little bit like I'm about halfway three quarters way back so I know I could probably go about that distance back in a creek on or near a secondary point and I bet you I can you know do the same thing catch quite a few fish out of it so try and be systematic about it because if you're not um, you'll look back at the end of your day and you'll be like well I just fished brush just literally all over because if you just chase brush here um, you will be all over because it's from the main lake all the way to the very back. There's fresh piles in here. So I try and be systematic about it to try and, you know, be in the most high percentage water or where I think, you know, the bigger fish are or whatever, uh, just to try and be as successful as I can. So that is what I'll leave you with. So good luck out there fishing some brush and hopefully you catch some big ones.